Okay, we're going to try something that I've been meaning to do for some time now. Um, it has logistical uh, problems. I need to keep my phone plugged in. Now we're going to watch the cord jingle. I need to hold it with my left hand and draw with my right. So we're going to try to um, improve upon this format, uh, or this technically speaking, but this format I like. I like to be able to speak and draw. Um, it's It's something that I need to look into further and something we're going to work out for a podcast that we're starting a friend and I as well. But for today, um, I got some paneling material and a dry erase marker. Um, I was going to try and draw as I spoke. Uh, I may still do a little of that, but I wanted to build the essential parts of what we're going to talk about um, before I started here. Uh, I want to talk about the structural problems in my building uh, they certainly apply to other buildings. My building is a balloon framing style. So you have post and beam style, you have balloon framing style, you have conventional stick building, which is how we do things today, and they're all a little bit different. Um, my building is sort of between post and beam and conventional stick framing, and you, it, it's illegal to build anything balloon style anymore, um, for a residence at least. <coughs> because there are problems with fire, and I'll go through those. But this is the cr a cross-section of my commercial turn-of-the-century building. It was built in the 1800s, late 1800s, 1895 or 6. Um, and so I've essentially sketched it in, in cross-section, how it was constructed originally, which is to say it had flat level floors. Um, the wall height of each floor of the building is essentially the same it would have been plumb level and square and that's where these old structures that are twisted up now people seem to think that they're they're old and you know that's just how they always were they were actually built plumb level and square to the accuracy level of the tools that the carpenter had when they were built and they simp they just change over time um one of the major ways is foundation settling it's one of the the only variations of foundation shift is what influences the rest of the structure because uh, again it's you know you, just in the language a foundation is where you start a foundation is what everything is based on so if the foundation stays put the rest of the structure stays put if the foundation migrates in any way uh, it translates up to the structure and so what I'm dealing with with my apartment number four renovation is uh, is uh, something that I'm going to further remediate later, but I needed to get that apartment back up and running. And so I'm going to d discuss here what happened over time. Uh, you you come along to the existing sort of ground when you set out to build something. What This is basically what they did. Uh, and then you start digging a hole to accommodate making your foundations, pouring your footings. And as you dig down, you go about half as far down as you need to go because you throw your dirt out and you end up heaping it up and creating a foundation depth, you know, by do, digging half as far, you throw the dirt out and then you get down to the depth that you wanted. So I'm sure the ground was round about this location, but we end up with a hole this deep and then we can pour our footer. And this these two uh, ends of the footer go out and around the whole footprint of the building. And these footings here are piers, for, uh, footings for piers, are just incidental places uh, down the middle for posts. When you go down in the basement, you've got your basement wall all the way around the outside, and then you've got posts. Well, each one of those uh, things has a big, wide, fat, thick concrete footing that spreads the load out, you know, into the surrounding existing site and translates that out rather than putting a tiny little point load uh, with a narrow foundation wall just pressing down like a guillotine blade into the ground you want a nice big footer and that's what you get in in this here and so they made their footers and then they stacked up my my building is field stone so they stacked up stones and mortared them you know together to get up to a certain height and they put a sill plate on which is lumber all the way around to make the transition from wood to um excuse me from stone and masonry to wood and that's normally bolted down into the foundation somehow so now it's not going anywhere now you have a nice place to begin um, but when they throw the first kind of floor joists from the edge of the sill plate out into the ether here they don't necessarily reach right across and some structures they do and you end up going from one side to the other with one piece of lumber the whole joist all the way across and you have a clear span no posts but in the case of my building it's too wide so they throw um, 
the joist, all the joists from this side go over the carrying beam, which we see in the cross section here, and then the joists from this side go hang over the carrying beam a little. This amount is variable. You just want to be all the way on it, and sometimes they're a bit longer, but they pass and they are sitting on that carrying beam. The beam must have a post down to a footer once again, so that was created there. And in back when my building was built, it was a wooden post. And then they spread some concrete around on the floor downstairs. It wasn't very thick, and it's just kind of broomed out or whatever. Uh, but what what happens is, and, and everything after that is built on top of it. So you you know you put a post from this right on the beam standing in between two floor joists. You put a post up to another beam, and then you go up. This is balloon framing, so the the studs go all the way one piece all the way to the eave, and then the joist rather than sitting on top of anything like it does now, you finish a wall now. To a certain height and then you sit the next story floor joist on the top plate to that wall but with balloon framing you just hang it over into the wall bay and you nail it up sometimes there was a little notch taken out of uh, the stud and a little ledger board like in uh, the pole barn conversion video we looked at how there was a little ledger board in there which mostly was there to set the joists all on and then you can move along and nail them in you don't have to hold them up and nail them it, it gives you something it really doesn't continue to work for you you're counting on the nails after they've been installed um, so be that as it may this what you get with balloon struck construction but these joists come over and they sit on this beam again and then you have another wooden post that goes up to another beam and then these joists sit back and forth on this beam and then we're in the third floor space and rather than going up to another beam with another post and having rafters uh, ceiling rafters sitting on top of it or on the ends going up to the ridge and carrying a ridge board all the way down and then laying the rafters uh, against it this building has trusses so uh, some of the earliest trusses that were constructed but they were done for commercial buildings like mine before they were done for houses uh, but it's just separate construct this entire construction would have been made on the ground over and over and over again and then carried up and perhaps it was made up in place that's an interesting because they wouldn't have had a crane to lift and place it they aren't really heavily built they're engineered more than they are built heavy and uh, in fact they're all like this these ties and stuff are all one by material the rafter itself and the the ceiling rafter and the roof rafters themselves are two-by material, but the ties and stuff inside are one-by. Anyway, you get yourself a rafters uh, a, a truss system upstairs, and then you have a clear span upstairs. So that was an interesting and uh, really nice way to build this building. Actually, that's one of the biggest things that I appreciate about it, because what has happened here over time? Uh, uh, the first floor, uh, my studio's in here, you know, and my girlfriend and I sort of live on this side, if you were to look at the building like this, and then we have apartment number four uh, over here, and apartment number two, I believe, is here. So I'm in one, and my girlfriend's or excuse me, my girlfriend's in one, and I'm in three. It's confusing, but anyway, apartment four and two are here, and then the attic space is upstairs here. What happened here? This is a problem, because your old foundation was, doesn't have any plastic. Uh, there's a name for it, but there's a product that we cover outside of a foundation now that's plastic um, and tar, and you end up, you want to have gutters that carry rainwater uh, down downspouts and away before it starts... Uh, to permeate down in here you want to keep this as dry as possible but um, because of the height of my building the and the steel roof the speed of the snow and stuff when it comes off would just rip gutters off so there are no gutters on my building so the water drips right off the edge here and it's uh, the grade wasn't perfect for all of time so it got wet here and water would migrate in and so you get moisture in your basement and right here we get moisture on the bottom of this wood post off and on dry and then moist again then dry and then moist again and microbes get to work on it and he rots off down here and so all of this weight now if I didn't have trusses even the ridge would be pressing down on this but what happens here this rots Okay, and then it settles down, so the rot, it just happens slowly. It doesn't rot and then poof, everything falls, but it continues to disintegrate and run downward. So I'm going to draw this in exaggeration here, but it rots and continues to run down. So the beam comes with that, and the ends of these floor joists come with that. So then they end up going downhill here, and downhill up here. downhill 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 
And again, I'm exaggerating in that it's bowed, but really I'm not using a ra uh, ruler, but it'd be a straight shot. The, the, the lengths of lumber remain into, you know, the same. So the ends of them sit in here like this, and the ends of them separate at the top out there because as a result of it being a straight shot. This beam going down takes this post down, takes this beam down. Once again, these joists run down to there, and it all happens very slowly, generally speaking. And then, same story here, your, your beam moves down on your post, and your floor comes down with that, and you end up with this situation. And if you think about it in cross-section, it's a lot easier to digest than trying to wrap your brain around it <clears throat> in 3D space. What doesn't happen is the truss migration. You don't get any truss migration. The, f the outside foundation here uh, hasn't had any problems because you know you get some uh, grout washing out and moisture can damage this stuff, but it doesn't happen as quickly as rotting off the wood. So whether or not the structural integrity of my foundation wall is good or bad, which generally speaking, it's good almost all the way around, this is a killer here. This here goes down, 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 and especially when the ridge, uh, or the, excuse me, the, the roof system is built this way, then you get something uh, like, I can't draw like this, but I'm going to have to move to a second video, but you get a structure like this. It's supposed to be like that, but you end up with one of these scenarios here, your ridge. You see these when you drive by on the road. Sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's otherwise. Uh, you know, but this is what you're what you're getting there is a translation all the way through. So let's drop this for now before my video runs out and we'll come back and continue.